Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to be doing some woodland photography with a 50mm prime. So something a little bit different. I'll be honest, I've not really used this prime lens much, but my camera club are doing a challenge this week where we're going to go out and take some photos and we're going to share them later on. Um, normally we'd go out in the field and do it together as a group, but the weather's not looking too great for when we're next meeting up. So we thought we'd do it this way instead. And I've barely used this lens. I think I used it once up in London. Uh, so a really good time to uh, use the 50mm. Now, the key to this kind of challenge is getting the composition right in the camera. So that's what we're going to do a little bit of today. I'll show you a little bit of that. And also a little bit of a mini review on this lens as well, because I've not done one of those yet. So get to see how it goes. So uh, come on, let's go. One of the things I really like about this is the minimum focal distance. So if you look at where I'm at now on the camera, I'm probably, what, 25 centimetres away or so? And on the camera, it's just in focus, a little bit closer. Can't focus, a little bit further out. Perfectly focused. Lovely bokeh as well. Now one of the benefits of using a prime lens when you're out in somewhere like this is <clears throat> the sun is up. Obviously we are two hours after sunrise, but it's still half past six in the morning. So the light's not fully coming into the forest yet. And woodlands is naturally a little bit darker anyway. <clears throat> so with that in mind, I can't shoot at my typical F8, F9 for my landscape photography because it's dark doesn't look very dark on the video I know but it is dark and that means that essentially I need to drop this down to around 2.8 which is giving me some lovely bokeh um, but it means that I have to have settings of 2.8 I've got my shutter speed at uh, 50th of a second the reason for that is obviously I want to try and reduce um, blur in my photo and my ISO is at six, 640 so we've got to bump that ISO up a little bit. But, yeah, it's not going to stop me. I really like this here, how the sun is hitting this. I've just taken one from afar, one at, at F8, and then I've taken some little um, little shots of the little plant here and the little one up there just for a bit of bokeh. But I like this. This looks like two sort of high hills, two kind of like boots and legs in the forest. Yeah, I really like that one. I just love the detail in the shot and how sharp this lens is and I just really love the sort of chicken legs look and the sort of high heels. I wish I'd moved that stick in front. So let's talk about this lens. This this lens is a 62mm diameter but you can see on here it's very tiny, very tiny opening, very tiny glass, quite a big body the actual lens itself um, in all in all but it's super light but yeah as you can see very low low is the wrong word very small glass you might have seen this scene before I love this scene this, I like this bridge a lot and I tend to photograph it from the other side as well but I just thought I'd show you you can do landscape photography with a prime lens as well a 50mm so what I've kind of got on my camera here kind of see the composition I've got, step back a little bit. So I've got the tree there on the little left hand side by the bridge and I've got the other tree on the other side as well just kind of bringing the focus in and the light kind of lighting up the scene. Shooting at f2.8, ISO 250 and still keeping my shutter speed at a 50th of a second. Step away. It's underexposed but I'm okay with that because I'll just bring the shadows up a little bit but yeah, that looks cool. I'll put that on screen now. Just to show, like, you can do landscape photography with 50mm prime. And actually, a lot of photos I've taken recently are 35mm to 80mm. Slight, slide, slide, slide track, I know. Side track, even. But I do a lot of landscapes. You know I do a lot of landscapes, but we're in the woods. Possibilities are everywhere.
so yeah sort of fairly fairly large body for a prime lens um but yeah very small glass and but it's lightweight it's very lightweight it's very nifty very hard to get compositions though when you're standing there and you're trying to get photos of this big tree behind me absolutely love it it's called i call it the hugging tree you see out there um i'll show you a photo of it now but it's very hard i have to stand miles back but even then i've then got bushes in the way and other stuff so probably not the my recommended lens for woodland photography I think it's probably more portrait style stuff i know i'm using it out of its natural habitat and you know that stuff but that's what creativity is all about right i think uh, i'm up for the challenge and trying to compose this it's definitely opened up my creative my creative juices this morning and uh i guess kind of shown me different compositions and abstract stuff that i don't normally do so uh i like that i like that a lot so i think sometimes that's what it's all about right this is probably my favorite shot of the day uh, taking at f8 I just uh, I love the little sun flare coming through and it just goes to show that you can do this sort of stuff with a 50 mil prime as well so I think that's that's it for this video um what is my verdict well my verdict on it is I mean it's a good lens it's um it's one of Nikon's S lenses so you know the quality of glass is good um I need to go back and review the footage to see what some of the like um, sun players look like and what the bokeh looks like. All in all, I think it's a great lens. It's great for the, um, for what you want. Probably route better for portraits. I'm. Would I use it again? Probably not too often. It's not one I'd actively have in my bag. Probably one I'm thinking I've definitely considered selling before. Um, so I think my conclusion is, don't rush and buy it. I think. If you're doing portrait photography or maybe doing like street photography i think yeah it's a buy but then again i'd probably opt for a 24 mil prime lens or something a little bit wider just so you got more options because then you can always crop in but that's down to you at the end of the day i think for me good for my photography club challenge but i think it's time to sell Hope you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.